Hey, what's up guys? Austin back here, posted up in the stew, the freaking uh, mobile YouTube studio slash RV. Now, if you're new to my channel, this is the enclosed trailer that I built. You can check it out in all my other videos. But today, we're going into the classroom right here, and I'm going to kind of show you guys how I would wire up a transfer switch um, and an inverter in your trailer. I'm going to show you guys how I did it, and then hopefully you guys can take that information if you're doing a trailer similar to this like an enclosed trailer or if you have a standard RV and you want to add an inverter I'll show you why you should get a transfer switch and all that. Alright so we'll start out with the modern RV in stock form now a lot of the trailers these days come with generators um, some of them still don't smaller trailers and whatnot but if you have a generator in your trailer most likely you're gonna have a transfer switch basically a transfer switch all it does is it's an automatic switch that chooses which power, if it's gonna take the power from the generator or power from the, the shore power, which is like you plug into your house, and then it puts it to all the, the AC outlets and appliances. Uh, the reason why you need one is so that you don't have two kinds of power trying to go into, or two sources of power trying to go into one output. Um, it's just kind of a safety thing and just an easy automatic feature. Now my parents' trailer, it was an older one, and instead of a transfer switch they actually had to unplug the generator and then plug it into a plug inside the trailer and so it's kind of like a manual transfer switch in a way but nowadays they all come with an automatic one so hopefully this is big enough that you guys can see but here we have the generator power coming into the transfer switch shore power coming into the transfer switch and whichever one of these is on is going to come to the output okay let's say that you purchased an inverter and now you want to install it in your trailer this is what I would recommend. There, I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but I feel that this is probably the easiest and the safest way, although it is a little bit more expensive and a little bit more in-depth of an install. So basically what you're going to do, you have your stock transfer switch just like I showed, I showed in this diagram here. You have all that is the same. The output comes down and then in between the, the first transfer switch and the breaker box, just like right here, you're going to install a second transfer switch. Now what that's going to do is you're going to have your output from your first one, which is going to choose between the shore power and the generator power, and that's going to go to the shore power input on your second transfer switch. And now, and then your uh, inverter power is going to come in on the generator side or the second leg. Now the reason why you would want to do this is because it wouldn't matter which power source you turned on. You could turn on the shore power, the generator power, or the inverter power, and no matter which configuration, it's only going to let one through. You don't have to worry about back feeding your breakers, you don't have to worry about bypassing your breakers, running extension cords, um, back feeding your inverter when the other thing's on, or um, messing up your batteries. Say you turn on your inverter, the power is going to go to the transfer switch, it's going to choose inverter power because this isn't on and it's going to go straight out. It's going to go to your breaker box and then it's going to go to all of your outlets and appliances just like it normally would. Now, let's say you're plugged into shore power and then somebody turns the inverter on. What happens then? Well, the shore power comes in, flips the first transfer switch, goes through to the output, comes over here to the shore power, and then it's going to immediately transfer the second switch and then go to your breaker box. And then if you turn the inverter on while that's on, that power will come to the transfer switch and stop. It's not going to try to go anywhere else. The power from the shore power isn't going to go and back feed your inverter, which depending on the inverter, the quality of it, could go back to your batteries, feed 110 power to the batteries, and screw that up. So, um, yeah, I mean, you could repeat that for any of the situation. You could turn on your shore power and generator power. Only one of them is going to come through. Usually it's the first one that turns on. Um, so if you had your shore power on and then you turn your generator on, this is going to end right here. If you had your generator power on and you turned your shore power on, this one is going to remain active until you shut the generator off and then it will immediately transfer over and come through the rest of these. Okay, so here's another way that I've seen somebody do on YouTube. Um, this is one of the more legit ways but still not very good and I'll explain why. So basically they just had the stock transfer switch, the stock shore power and generator connections, 
and all they did is tie in the power from the inverter into the output and then straight into the breaker box. Now the good thing about this is it's still going to use all the breakers. Um, you're still going to be able to turn things on and off. You're going to have that protection of the breakers even on your inverter. But the problem is when you turn on your shore power or generator power and that power flows out down here through the output to the breaker box, it's also going to flow this way. It doesn't it doesn't matter, you know, if the wires are connected, the power is going to go to it. So now you're having uh, shore power, generator power, back feeding through your inverter. So that's going to come into the front of the inverter here. Um, depending how they're set up, it could either fry your inverter or if something fails, it could um, back feed that 110 or 120, whatever voltage to your batteries. So say this is your inverter box right here and then your leads coming off going to your battery. Now that power could possibly come through the inverter, through the wires, and into your battery, and this is a 12 volt battery. So what that's gonna do is jack up your batteries, feeding it way too much voltage. So that's why I would not recommend connecting the inverter into the output before the breaker box. Okay, so here's another option that I've seen. Same setup, you got the transfer switch and the breaker box, but in this case, instead of connecting the inverter on right here before the breaker box, I've seen somebody recommending that you connect the inverter in line before the plug. And so that's bypassing the breaker box and directly into this plug. Um, another way that I've seen people do it is instead of connecting actually into the, that, the wires behind the outlet, they'll come down here and they'll put a plug and go directly into the front of the outlet. Now, the, why this is a bad idea is because it bypasses all of the breakers right here. And then not only are you bypassing the breakers, so you have no protect, circuit protection, um, you're also back feeding the breakers, which, you know, if the power is flowing up here, it's going to go through the breakers if they're open, and it can come back up in here. And so it's just, there's no reason to do it like this. Um, I think what people think is if they plug it in here, now this plug right here will work as well as any other ones on that breaker. And it's more of a it's more of a simple situation because if you go to turn on the shore power or the generator, you can just simply unplug your inverter, which that is nice. But once again, if you come over here and do it how I'm recommending with a second transfer switch, <clears throat> you don't have to worry about unplugging your inverter, you don't have to worry about back feeding your breaker box, back feeding in your transfer switch, your generator, any of that stuff. Okay, so keep in mind a converter, which is going to be the box in your trailer that has all the breakers and everything like that. Um, generally, they all have a converter built in, which takes the 110 power when you plug in um, to the shore power or your generator, either or, and it converts it to 12 volt power. Um, the reason why you have this is so that when you plug in to a campground, and say you're running all your lights, normally, if your batteries are run down, your lights are going to be dim. But as soon as you plug in, um, it's going to power up the converter, and all of your 12-volt accessories, your lights, everything are now going to be running off of this converter, not the batteries. At the same time of providing tw uh, constant 12-volt power, you're also going to get battery charging as well. So there's a lot of them are pretty nice nowadays. They have like four stage chargers built in, which uh, balances your battery or keeps your batteries at their optimum health. Um, if you're gonna do a, com or a trailer like this and you're designing your whole entire electrical system from the ground up, you're gonna wanna do a converter. Number one, it's gonna give you breakers. It's gonna give you spots for fuses for your 12 volt power. And then it's gonna do your battery charging and your constant 12 volt power. So when you need that 12 volt power, it doesn't run off your batteries, say at a campground. Now, on the other hand, an inverter, which is usually an accessory added to trailers, it doesn't usually come stock, and an inverter takes the 12 volt power and converts it to 110 power, so it's just backwards. So I'll draw that out right here. So looking at these side by side, the converter goes from 110 power to 12 volt power, the inverter is the opposite, and it goes from 12 volt power to 110 power. And just for clarification on this, a transfer switch 
is for 110 power only. The um, transfer switch does not work for 12 volt power, and there's also not a reason to have a transfer switch for your 12 volt. Okay, so if you're thinking about putting an inverter in your trailer, there's a couple key things you need to look at to decide what size of inverter you're gonna need to get. Um, the first thing is what appliances you're gonna run. Are you gonna just try and run a TV? Are you gonna try to run an electric uh, cooktop? Do you have a massive battery bank and you wanna try and run your AC for a little bit? Those are all things you need to look at and you're gonna need to look at the required amount of power for each one. So the second thing you're gonna wanna consider is the battery size and health. You're gonna wanna look at the amp hour rating of your batteries as well as how old they are and you could try and figure out the capacity of those batteries if you need but um, generally if you have an, a smaller battery you're really not going to be able to run a whole lot or at least for a very long time because it'll pull the voltage down too much batteries get too low it cuts off the inverter so um, take that into consideration there's a whole bunch of different resources on youtube of figuring that out uh, i've suggested it before in the comments but there's a guy on here by the name of uh, Will Prouse. So if you search DIY solar with Will Prouse, he has a ton of different videos showing in depth of how to choose that situation. The next thing you want to consider is your solar setup. Like, do you have just a 50 watt panel or do you have a 300 watt array? And the reason for that is if you're running your inverter all the time instead of a generator, it's obviously going to drain your batteries. I would 100% recommend doing solar if you're gonna do an inverter because otherwise your batteries are just gonna to continue to drain. Okay, now moving on to the transfer switch. When you're choosing one of those, there are a few different brands out there and some different things you can look at, but the main thing you need to consider is the amp rating of your RV. So if you have a 50 amp plug or you have anything that says 50 amp on it with your the input of your trailer, you want to get a 50 amp transfer switch. Generally, you're gonna either have a 30 or a 50 amp. On my trailer, I did a 30 amp because I just have one AC and a few plugs, nothing too crazy, so I didn't need to run the big 50 amp breaker. And like I said, generally that is with um, trailers that have multiple air conditioners. There are other things you could consider with an inverter install. Uh, is it gonna be your input wires? You don't wanna put your inverter at the back of your trailer and the batteries are at the front. Ultimately, you want them to be as close together as possible. So if you can put the inverter right above the batteries and run like a two foot lead, that's going to be perfect um, because the farther you go with DC power, the more voltage drop and the bigger cable you're going to need to get that full, say, 2000 watts out of it. If you have a 2000 watt inverter and you run like 30 foot cables to it, you're going to get way less than 2000 amps out of it or uh, not 2000 amps that would be a lot but you're going to get way less than 2000 watts so keep that in mind you want the the wires to be as short as possible once it gets up to the 110 power it doesn't matter you can run it as long as you need okay guys here's another trailer i did the transfer switch install like i was explaining this is a uh, 24 foot wolf pack it's got the generator on board now it has an inverter and all that but so you come in here, and this is going to be your converter breaker box, just so you kind of know what it looks like, what to expect. You have all your breakers right here. This is for your AC power only, and then you have all your fuses right here for your DC power. So if you come here on the back, this is the factory transfer switch. They're pretty easy to identify, mostly because you're going to have one input power, and then you're going to have two, or you're going to have one uh, plug on this side and two on this side. Now you can see the connections in here. Um, this factory transfer switch, the switching mechanism itself is behind this tab. See how these wires go down into here. So basically you just have these wires that come out and it says right here, it says black is the hot, white's the neutral. Basically all you gotta do is connect your colors on, connect them right into this one, and you're gonna be good to go. Um, one more small note to consider. So these two transfer switches are set up differently by the two and the one so if you look at this one here it'll say output right here on the bottom and so you think okay there's one wire that's going to be the output and then you look at this one and you see one wire and you think that's the output that is going to be incorrect so this one is actually going to be the output so when you do this on your transfer switch make sure you either test or you know where they go 
um, know which power source is what because if you're to hook up the say the shore power to the generator power thinking this is the output you're gonna have a big issue there all right so I'll go out there and I'll show you but this is the wire for the inverter like I said all it is is an extension cord this is a heavier duty extension cord I use that because it already had a plug on it and it looked nice plug it into the inverter and I didn't need that much more power it's not a huge inverter and the batteries the batteries on this trailer aren't very big so um, the main reason was just to run this TV behind me and maybe if you want to plug in like some other small appliance so nothing too crazy all I did is run the extension cord pretty cheap uh, economical way if you guys are looking at that so I'll go show you the inverter first I'll show you the remote turn on so I just wired this right here by the generator turn on all it is is just this power button here so if you hit that it's gonna power up the inverter Okay, each trailer is going to be different, but on this particular one, I mounted the inverter all the way over there in the corner, and that's because of the, the way I could run the wires down to the battery, the input wires. Yeah, I think uh, hopefully I beat up that topic pretty good for you guys. Smash that like button if you enjoyed this content. Hopefully it's able to help you out. I know I've been getting a lot of questions on the electrical system. Um, I might go in depth on a couple other parts of the electrical system if needed, but... Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for subscribing, watching all the way through if you have. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys on the next one, maybe in like another week or maybe in like two months. I don't know. So see you guys.